until these equations fit together, and then we get a sheet of paper and scribble. It can be very frustrating at times, scribbling equations everywhere. The old cliche of scribbling on the back of the envelope often is true, because that's sometimes all you have around. He was always thinking in pictures, visualizing things. When his father gave him a compass, he would just sit up night after night, watching the needle point northward. It would send chills down his spine. Einstein once said, I want to know God's thoughts in a mathematical way. Einstein wanted an equation, perhaps no more than one inch long, that would encapsulate all physical laws, the beauty, the majesty, the power of the universe into a single equation. That was his life's goal. In 1900, Albert Einstein is a 21-year-old undergraduate at the Swiss Federal Polytechnic. That this young man will one day be synonymous with genius was something none of his professors would have predicted. He would cut class. The professors thought he was a goof-off. As a consequence, Einstein couldn't get a single job after graduation. He even thought about switching fields and selling insurance. Can you imagine opening the door one day and there's Albert Einstein selling you life insurance? What a waste. Einstein thought he was such a loser. He wrote a letter to his family saying that it would be better if perhaps he was never born. Nobody was talking about the young Albert Einstein. He worked as a substitute teacher in short jobs in various towns. Einstein's father tried to apply on behalf of Einstein for academic positions. And he wrote to a very famous professor and asked him whether he could use Einstein as a research assistant. But there were no positions available. His father passes away thinking that young Albert is a total disgrace to the family. In 1902, the depressed and despondent young Albert moves to Bern, Switzerland's capital, and begins a career far from science. One of his friends arranges for Einstein to get a job as a lowly patent clerk in the Swiss patent office. In this office, on the third floor, Einstein spends six days a week reviewing applications submitted by all kinds of inventors to the Swiss government. Given a patent, you had all this information, and he had to strip it down to the essence and that honed his skills as a physicist. He would very quickly dash off all the patents that he had to analyze. He didn't find the work very strenuous. It was not so intellectually uh, demanding. And it would give him ample time to contemplate the universe. He never would have been very good at a university kissing up to a senior professor. He was much better at a stool in the patent office, trying to daydream about what is it like to ride alongside a light beam. From that job, he would launch a revolution which would change world history. Einstein's idle daydreams will profoundly change the way the universe is understood. In 1905, in what's been called his miracle year, he publishes in his spare time four visionary papers, the first of which answers the age-old question, what is light? The photoelectric effect. This paper, written by this total unknown, showed that light comes as a particle called the photon. We use that in television, we use that in lasers. In another paper, the 26-year-old Einstein posits something we now take for granted, the existence of atoms. People didn't believe in atoms in those days, but they proved that atoms can actually make small little dust particles.